on the station that's on your side. This is Channel 7 News. Good morning, Arkansas. Well, do you want to reduce your risk of cardiovascular disease? Push-ups may be able to help, according to a new report. And here to explain this is Baptist Health Cardiologist Dr. Scott Davis. Thanks for being here with us this morning. Good morning. So push-ups, explain yeah. this for right. us. How does this work? Drop and give me 20, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> so interesting study. So the, the, the smart people at Harvard mm -hmm. did a study. They looked at a group of firefighters in the state of Indiana. And so they had 1,100 men, okay, that they studied over a 10-year period. And the average age was about 40 years old, so mm -hmm. it wasn't the 25-year-old calendar firefighter guys. I mean, it was it had a good, broad, you know, selection of men. And they, they followed them over, over uh, like I said, a 10-year period. And they found that the ability to do push-ups had a direct correlation in their cardiovascular risk. Okay. In that, if you were able to do over 40 push-ups compared to, say, only less than 10 push-ups, you had a 96% reduced risk of having a heart attack, stroke, or heart failure. Wow. Crazy, right? Yeah. And so they, they broke they broke folks down into into five groups, so less than ten, less than twenty, less than thirty, less than forty, or over forty. And it it, it did it, it was a stair step fashion. Mm -hmm. Now the big break was was at the ten mark. So if you could do over ten push ups, you did have an incremental benefit as far as risk reduction. And what was really interesting was is they compared that group then to the ability to do a stress test, yeah. you know, a conventional treadmill stress test like yeah. we do in the office. And the ability to do push ups was a better indicator. And so, yeah, so it, it goes back to our, our overall theme that we have when we often talk about this. Look, we, you know, we want people to get off the couch, yeah. right? You need, to, you need to exert yourself to some degree. And so, uh, you know, some is better than nothing, right? And, and, and so we want you to at least pursue, we recommend 30 minutes a day, at least three times a week. Mm -hmm. And so beyond all the obvious, it's good for your overall health. You feel better about yourself. You stay a little bit skinnier. You have good self-confidence. It's good for your heart health. And, and, and and then to add to that then, and I know now people are going to go, you know, after the segment are going to start, you know, hitting the floor and do a push-up, push right? I know, that's what I'm do. thinking right Absolutely. now. Absolutely. But it, it at least will then cue you to say, okay, I can do more than just put some miles on the tires, check my Apple Watch or Fitbit. Yeah. I need to do something else that is also, you know, aerobic, but in a, in a different way. So. Mm -hmm. it, it, it speaks two things. Number one, it's a good barometer. It's a good yardstick in addition to something conventional like a stress test. You mm -hmm. don't have to go to your doctor's office to get a stress test and just get, get an assessment that way. Yeah. You can see where you are on the, you know, kind of yeah. on the curve as far as your ability to do push-ups. And number two, it speaks volumes to getting off the couch and, and putting some miles on your tires. Yeah. One of the questions I had, you were saying the study was made, is done on men. Right. Is this a similar thing for women as well? Yeah. I mean, we've, we've noticed, you know, that the incidence of heart disease is continuing to grow amongst mm -hmm. younger and younger women. And so, the, yeah, the, the cohort here, the, the study group was a group of firemen who was, you know, kind yeah. of a captive audience and the easier group to study yeah. and follow over a long period of time. But yeah, it also applies across, across both genders. Okay. And, um, how does this like compare to, we, you kind of touched on this, but other forms of exercise. So we're talking just push-ups here, but just getting up and getting active is the main goal. Yeah, yeah. And the key thing is we want you want to get your heart rate up, yeah. right? That, that's the thing. Like I tell people, if you can read a book at the same time, it's probably not exercise, yeah. right? So I'm not going to knock a recumbent bike, but I mean, we need to do something where you're going to huff and puff and yeah. sweat a little bit and, and, and get your heart rate up. The key thing to aerobic exercise is getting your heart rate up. Okay. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm never against any kind of isometric exercise, lifting weights, that kind of thing. But yeah. I often tell people the smart play here is to exercise, do something aerobic first, get on the treadmill first and then do your weights, not vice versa, because you typically get a better workout aerobically on the back end if you have the weight piece on the back end yeah. versus the front end. That's what I've heard too. Um, let's let's talk about like when it comes to starting the whole push-up thing. If you, you're saying if you if you drop and give 20 now, yeah. you might be in good shape that way, but how? what is the end goal? How, how many, how many push-ups should you be doing? Well, the, the it's not so much how many push-ups should you be doing yes. and setting that as a goal. It, the, the thing is to carve out, look at your week calendar, okay. right? Yeah. And say, all right, I'm going to start out and I'm going to do something that I can I can carve up and I can I can at least accomplish right. Yes. Don't train for a marathon tomorrow, mm -hmm. right? So what you want to do is to say, okay, a I want to see if I can get 30 minutes a day for for a week, right? And then I want to see if I can get 30 minutes a day for four weeks, and then for four months, and then for six months, and so okay. stretch that out. Start with those smaller goals and hopefully yep. extend that till it becomes 
a pattern in an everyday thing for you. Absolutely. I love that. That's awesome. Um, so what's the takeaway for everyone at home watching this segment? Two things. Number one is it now you got now you got a yardstick that you can use on your own to see how many push-ups you can do, mm -hmm. right? And then the, the, you don't necessarily have to go and, and, and get a stress test per se to see where you are on the risk kind of, you know, uh, scale. But moreover, we always encourage people, look, don't go out there and start hitting the pavement if you've had some risk factors, if you've had some health issues without engaging aging your doctor first. So yes, call course. us at 188 Baptist, right? Or get, get in to see your primary care doctor. Come see one of the heart guys like me mm -hmm. and at least get that evaluated because we don't want you to fail your stress test, uh, you know, uh, out, out uh, walking in the deer woods or walking out, you know, uh, to exercise for the yeah. first time, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you so much, you Dr. Scott Davis. We appreciate Have you. Baptist week. Health, you guys are awesome.